Okay, it seems that we're ready to start the next session. Perfect. Thanks, Gaetano. So uh, welcome back, everyone. And hopefully you have enjoyed this uh, great day, this great workshop that uh, we've been uh, uh, planning for you. And uh, now it's my pleasure to announce the, and chair the next set of sessions. And to begin with, we'll have Professor Yu Yang Li. He obtained his PhD degree from the University of Science and Technology of China in 2010. And he is now a professor and vice dean at the School of Mechanical Engineering, Shanghai Jiao Tong University. His research interests include combustion chemistry, flame dynamics, flame gas turbine combustion, combustion pollutant controls, and especially carbon neutral fuels. He was awarded the Research Excellence Award of the Combustion Institute, the China Youth Science and Technology Award, China State Natural Science Award, and so on, many other awards, and therefore he serves as chair in many panels and committees. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Professor Jun Yang, and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you for the introduction. So, uh, okay, thank you. So, uh, yes, it's my great pleasure to uh, attend this meeting and introduce the work of my group, in the, especially in the enhancement of ammonia combustion by different strategies, like, for example, like co firing, oxygen enrichment, and uh, pre cracking. And first, I'll give a very short introduction about the background. And uh, as we all know, that world is now working together on reducing carbon dioxide emissions and pursuing a bad and clear living circumstance. And especially in the year before last year, China pledged to peak the carbon dioxide emissions by 2030 and uh, achieve the carbon neutrality before 2060. And this is actually a very heavy task for China because as we know that China actually um, generates the almost one third of the global carbon emissions, and therefore we have a lot to do. And nowadays, low carbon and all zero carbon fuels, therefore are attracting more, much more enormous concerns than we ever had, especially in China. And uh, as this uh, workshop, this meeting uh, does, does, and we have the ammonia as the fuel. And uh, actually, uh, as Professor Kodpabayashi introduces that among various low carbon and zero carbon energy carriers, and ammonia actually is an emerging one due to a lot of promising properties, as we all know, and I will not repeat this. And uh, but we all know that it has a very established production, storage, and transportation infrastructures, especially in China. And we have a lot of uh, industry of generating ammonia. And it also has, uh, has been adopted as test fuels for the stationary gas turbine and the marine engines. But there are still many challenges in ammonia applications in combustion devices. For example, it is high energy consumption during censuses. And we nowadays we are expecting that the renewable electricity generation can help us solve this problem. And uh, also in combustion for ammonia, we have a lot of, uh, we have a very high NOx emissions compared with the traditional hydrocarbon fuels like methane. And um, as Professor Kobayashi shows in this morning, and we can see that actually um, there's a lot of progress in controlling NOx emissions, and especially by combining with the denox um, applicators. And the last one is the low combustion intensity compared with other fuels. And we can see that ammonia has a very low flame propagation rate. And we can which make its combustion very weak compared with the traditional hydrocarbon fuels and also with hydrogen combustion. And uh, in this uh, report, in this lecture, we uh, want to focus on this um, this issue and uh, just discuss some strategies to enhance it. Enhance it. And uh, in conventional combustion enhancement strategy for ammonia, co-firing with other uh, reactive fuels is the most uh, frequently adopted. Uh, strategy. And beside the hydrogen co-firing and also some renewable fuels, we, if we are just uh, um, blending the ammonia with, for example, methane or with like thin gas, and uh, we have to face the challenge of carbon emissions. Therefore, there's still a lot of um, things to do for the enhancement of ammonia combustion, especially in um, the practical combustion devices. Another issue is that um, actually um, the still not so abundant in fundamental combustion research on ammonia at high pressures. 
for example, especially for the uh, flame propagation. And because lambda burning velocity is an important combustion parameter as well as indicator of combustion intensity. And we can see that before 2020, most of the previous research of pure ammonia and the fuel blending for the lambda burning velocities, they are all focusing on the pressures from normal pressure to elevated pressures, but there are rare data for high pressure combustion of ammonia. And but then in the internal combustion engine and also gas turbine, we all know that the pressure is always a lot higher than 10 ATM and even higher. And therefore we will need some um, new measurements about the high pressure um, combustion parameters of ammonia and the related state systems. Therefore, the research targets of this work, including to obtain the lambda burning velocity data up to 10 ATM for ammonia combustion. And also we want to just develop kinetic models and provide insights into important kinetics of ammonia combustion and explore and test the novel combustion enhancement strategies for ammonia. And then I will introduce uh, the experimental methods used in this work. And in Shanghai Jiao Tong University, we developed a normal to high temperature and pressure constant volume combustion vessel. And this vessel can uh, sustain the maximum static pressure up to 200 ATM and the maximum heating temperature up to 230 degrees Celsius, and which can help us to study um, a lot of practical system, uh, combustion systems for, for at high pressures, for example, the initial pressures higher than 10 or 20 ATM. And we, for the ammonia combustion, we're using the passive method to reduce the ammonia absorption effect. And the nonlinear extrapolation method was used to derive the experimental data. And then the upper limit of flame radius is um, just to 23 millimeters which is smaller than 0.3 times the chamber inner diameters to ensure that the measurement was not influenced by the confinement effect. And also we performed the uncertainty analysis for the data. And then we also performed test experiments in normal and elevated temperature and pressure model combustors. Uh, we just, uh, just use a um, small burner that is up to 20, in gram per second, and also we have a larger one um, to just perform the elevated pressure and temperature model combustor. And we also use uh, the optics and optic and uh, laser diagnostics like chemiluminescence with hyperspeed camera, and also the particle imaging photosymmetry and planar laser induced fluorescence of uh, different combustion products to help us to uh, marry the results. And then for in the connected model development, and we use uh, our previous C0 to C1 mechanism as the base model for the hydrocarbon and hydrogen and hydrocarbon um, model. And also we use uh, ammonia sub mechanism as the updated, um, which is updated from the Sirita model with, uh, um, with a lot of new progress of the ammonia sub mechanism reactions um, to be updated inside of the um, sub mechanism. And we, and we paid special attention on the kinetics in the ammonia and NO interactions. And this is not only important in ammonia combustion, but also plays a crucial role in thermodynamics chemistry. And previous research mainly um, focused on using the flow reactors and the jet fuel reactors at an intermediate temperature for this um, interaction chemistry. And uh, for the, few, the potential applications of ammonia, and we all know that we need to understand the high temperature um, interactions of this um, ammonia and uh, NO. And therefore by um, adopting NO as the oxidizer in the um, combustion vessel. And now we can study the ammonia NO interaction um, by measuring the lambda burning velocities of these mixtures. And uh, we can see that actually this shows the uh, measured results from the um, almost stoichiometric conditions to rich conditions. And it can be observed that actually, and because such data are really lack previously and the previous models can hardly capture the married experimental result and has a wider distributions to in predicting the ammonia and NO interaction chemistry. And by using the sensitivity and the um, rate of production analysis, we find that actually in the NH2 and NO reactions play important roles 
in the um, NH3 NO interaction. And the, react, the pathway forming NH and OH is the most important chain branching reaction, while it's competing pathway forming N2 and H2O, which is a termination reaction, shows, shows the largest negative sensitivity coefficients. And uh, the results in using the ammonia and NO by awarding the using of oxy oxygen can provide highly sensitive radiation targets for the kinetics in the ammonia and the NO interaction. And we, here we can see that for the most important chain branching reaction, NH2 plus NO give us NH and OH. For this reaction, if we just uh, increase or decrease the rate constant of it by 15%, and we can see that the model behaves change, changes greatly, and which is much broader in distributions compared with the experimental uncertainties. And the, therefore, interestingly, it can observe that it can be observed that the um, very global combustion parameter lambda burning velocity can also provide um, validation string and um, very um, good strength for the validation of the um, kinetics in combustion system, and. We also compared with the speciation data measured by Wendering and his co workers in 1994. And we can see that actually in the lambda flames, by also adding and by increasing or decreasing the rate constant by 15%, and the model behaviors, behaviors doesn't change too much, especially for the fuel and the oxidizer. And we can find that they just change the shape, the position of the sheep. And we all know that the position of the predicted refraction mer um, profiles of fuel and oxidizer in lambda premixed flames are strongly inflected by the uncertainties of the temperature profiles. Therefore, it can hardly just provide a very strong constraint for the um, models. And uh, therefore, um, the global combat parameters by, um, by proper use, it can also provide good validation for the kinetics inside of the model. And also, we studied the kinetics in hydrogen and the NO interaction, and which because now nowadays we also use hydrogen to enhance the combustion of ammonia. Therefore, the in the high temperature conditions, hydrogen and NO interactions also becomes important. And uh, similarly, we can find that the present experiments can provide a strong um, constraint for the validation of the kinetic models. And also, for the most important reaction, the H plus NO gives us N and the OH. And uh, this reaction can also be strongly, um, strongly um, constrained, constrained. And uh, therefore, um, here we find that the, the evaluated rate constant by Bach in 2005 gives the best uh, predictions. The model was also validated against the literature data, for example, the lambda burning velocity of ammonia and air system and uh, uh, is co firing with syn gas and uh, also the ignition delay times and also speciations in the other systems. And uh, this all can provide that in the model can all, all strongly be validated against a vast number of this data and uh, showing the, our, pre, our present model behaves generally good. And then we can um, go to see the enhancement effects in the um, flame propagation. And here we choose mainly three, um, co three um, strategies. One is co-firing with syn gas, and the, the second one is uh, oxygen enhancement, and the third one is uh, pre-cracking. And therefore, we have the blend of the fuel with ammonia, hydrogen, and nitrogen. With hydrogen and nitrogen is the ratio of one to three. And uh, as we can see that for the ordinary for the for the ordinary ammonia air flames that is strongly affected by buoyancy effect, and the, all three um, strategies can effectively restrain the buoyancy effect even on the elevated and uh, high pressures. While the flame propagation of ammonia and also its blending systems at 10 atm reveals strong cellular instabilities on the lean and stoichiometric conditions. And the flame surface becomes much smoother as the gross ratio increases. This is quite this is quite similar with the small hydrogen, small fuel systems like hydrogen and methane. And by also by extracting the lamp burning velocities from the flame images, and we can find that all three strategies 
can effectively, effectively increase the laminar burning velocity of ammonia to the extent of natural, natural gas or even higher. And uh, our present model can reasonably predict the laminar burning velocities in all the three strategies. And then we would like to understand the dominant effect inside the enhancement. And as we all know that uh, there are three major effects inside the combustion enhancement strategies. That is chemical effect, thermal effect, and the transport effects. But the last, the formal two, chemical effects and the thermal effects are always uh, important ones. Then when we look into the adiabatic flame temperature in all the three strategies, we find that the temperature all dramatically increases. Therefore, it can help directly to, it can help um, to directly derive which effects, effect is more important from the simple analysis of the uh, flame temperature. Then um, also we go to see the reacting networks of ammonia consumption in the three enhancement strategies. But we also find that they are quite similar. And therefore it can um, be understand that the enhancement of the ammonia combustion by the three strategies should all come from the thermal effect and the chemical effect. Um, but the, the thermal effect is mainly the increase of the laminar and flame, and laminar flame temperature, uh, the adiabatic, adiabatic flame temperature, and then for the um, chemical effect uh, that should come from the um, great production of the important radicals, for example, like H atom. But how to distinguish thermal effects and the chemical effects in ammonia combustion? So this leads us to, um, better, to um, deeper think about it. And uh, in previous work, people always use statistics to learn to gas, learn to gas method to separate the chemical effect and the thermal effect. And this is uh, the principle for this um, method. And uh, we can just uh, know that the chemical effect is mainly, um, the lambda burning velocity is related with the chemical effect with the global activation energy term. And then thermal effect is related to the um, temperature term. Therefore, by um, using a fictitious dynamic gas, which can keep, keep the gas mixture with constant temperature and uh, with almost the same or similar transport properties. And we can separate the chemical and the thermal effects. Previously, previously people always used carbon dioxide, which has a higher heat capacity than um, nitrogen. And uh, the, the conventional fictitious dynamic gas um, will, can generate the same transport data as uh, nitrogen and higher heat capacity than nitrogen and also constant oxygen more fractions. And this can um, help separate the chemical and the thermal effects in hydrocarbon systems. But then if we look inside the ammonia system, because nitrogen itself is not only a dilute gas, but also a product. Therefore, by simply uh, replacing nitrogen with uh, fictitious nitrogen using carbon dioxide's uh, heat capacity, then it uh, will generate some um, shift of chemical equilibrium, which will um, disturb the separation of chemical and thermal effects. Therefore, in this work, we um, propose that uh, we can use, um, we can update the fictitious dynamic um, gas method by using a high molecular weight molecule to mimic, minimize the influence of the chemical equilibrium. For example, we can use chlorine, which is a uh, very large pH, and it has a heat capacity 23 times higher as that of uh, nitrogen at 20, 50, um, 20, um, 75 Kelvin. And therefore we do not need to replace almost the half of the nitrogen with the tutorous nitrogen, which will influence the chemical equilibrium. But we only need to just replace about two or three percent of it. And therefore it was um, just to make a very um, reduced uh, influence on the chemical equilibrium, which, which can help us um, much accurately separate the chemical and the thermal effects. By using this method, we can separate the dominant effect out. And we can find that, especially in the oxygen enrichment, because the oxygen oxidizer and the fuel both don't change. And therefore the thermal effect just plays the dominant role in, in enhancing the ammonia combustion. And then for the other two strategies, both the co-firing and the pre-cracking, the chemical effects and the thermal effects are both important. 
while the chemical effects generally plays a more important role. And also we compared the pressure dependence of laminate burning velocities in the three strategies. And we find that in the three strategies, the laminate burning velocity will always drop as the pressure increases as other hydrocarbon fuels. But compared with the syngas co-firing, pre-cracking, and hydrocarbon combustion, the pressure dependence of ammonia air and ammonia in oxygen nitrogen combustion under oxygen enrichment conditions is much weaker. And this is mainly due to the reduced importance of the three body chain termination reactions. And also this indicates that the uh, oxygen enrichment strategy of ammonia combustion can provide, can preserve the, light and the flame propagation at high pressure compared with other two um, stra uh, strategies. And also we compared the uh, nitrogen formation in the pre-cracking strategy. And we can say that with the increasing of the cracking ratio, the, the O formation increase at first and then decrease, and it peaks at almost 70%. And we also performed the, the um, updated the fictitious dilute gas method to separate the permanent effects. And we find that actually the thermal effect is only a small, has only a small contribution, but the chemical effect has a higher contribution to the enhanced uh, increase. Uh, uh, NO formation. And then we perform the, the deep um, kinetic analysis and we find that um, this effect is mainly caused by the synergy in NO formation between the ammonia and the hydrogen. And we, as we can see that if we multiply the concentration of NH and H, it also peaks at 7%, at the 70% pre-cracking ratio. And the, and we also, we can find that the interaction between the two radicals and was strongly influenced the formation from an NO. And then we further test the strategies in model combustor. And from both the fuel, co reactive fuel co firing and the oxygen enrichment, and we can find the ammonia flame gradually shrinks as either the reactive fuel content or the oxygen content increases. And this means the flame becomes more stable. And the different colors in co-firing with DME under lean conditions result from the um, different chemiluminances, while the, which denote the preferential uh, DME and the NH3 oxidation at the lower and the higher regions. And also we can find some rose gold color on the stoichiometric and the slightly high uh, rich conditions. This denotes the most uh, simultaneous oxidation of DME and uh, ammonia. And also we compared the lean blowout limit and the NOx emissions. We find that the LBO decreases remarkably as the reactive fuel content or the oxygen content increases. This indicating that the flame becomes more stable and it is also associated with the enhanced reactivity of the reacting system led by the increased lambda burning velocities. And also we found that the emissions of NO and NO2 both increase we, this shows that the, um, uh, the trade-off behavior between the combustion enhancement and the NOx emissions. And uh, at the last, I would like to give some conclusions and perspectives. And in this work, we can successfully measure the laminar burning velocity, which is a very important combustion parameter, up to 1080 m, which is close to the um, practical engine um, conditions uh, at the initial conditions. And uh, it, this can help us extend the validation targets of, for ammonia kinetic models. And we we'll also use the spherically propagating flame method to characterize important kinetics of ammonia combustion. Uh, for example, the ammonia NO and the hydrogen NO interaction. And we also test the three, um, three um, strategies like co-firing with syngas, oxygen enrichment and pre-cracking. They can all effectively and effectively enhance ammonia combustion with the updated fictitious dilute gas method. And we can separate the chemical effects and the thermal effects in ammonia combustion by awarding the influence of the shift of chemical equilibrium. And we also can derive the dominant effects in different um, strategies. And we find that compared with other two strategies, oxygen enrichment is more relied on the high temperature and also can better preserve the laminar burning velocities at high pressures. And also we perform the test in gas turbine model combustor and it verifies the, the enhancement effects and the 
also demonstrates the trade-off behavior between combustion enhancement and NO emissions. And in the future, we need more advances in experimental and diagnostic methods, which can provide more knowledge about the characteristics and the chemical structure for ammonia combustion under relevant conditions in internal combustion engines and gas turbines. And the deeper understanding of ammonia combustion kinetics, especially more accurate uh, more accurate rate constants for important elementary reactions will be very important because in most uh, of the um, presentations regarding to ammonia combustion chemistry, we can find that a lot of these reactions are still not very um, accurately studied with, uh, with those rate constants. And uh, a, a, a very broad distributions of the rate constant can be found from different sources. Therefore, um, this can help us to the, the progress in this in kinetics can help us develop a more highly predictable and widely applicable kinetic model of ammonia combustion. And also more investigations on the combustion enhancement strategies of ammonia, especially the combustion organization methods to control NO emissions can facilitate the application of ammonia in internal combustion engines and gas turbines. And finally, I want to um, thank my, the funding support from the funding agencies and also my collaborators from other groups and uh, also my um, students and the postdocs. And uh, so thank you for your attention. And also I'm glad to discuss it um, later. Thank you very much, Professor Lee. It was a really interesting uh, chat and uh, similar to the previous ones. And we'll just wait for the discussion time that we have after all the presentations. Thank you very much.